What's going on, Colts Nation? I appreciate you joining me for another video where today we're going to talk a little bit about the injury situation from the Colts and a little bit of a little bit about a couple of things, right? Michael Pittman Jr. is, you know, the leading part of this conversation and the toughness that comes from him. And as you could tell by the thumbnail here, we're also going to be talking about Anthony Richardson, how that links up into it, and the different players on the roster, right? So Michael Pittman Jr. was said to go like every insider was reporting Michael Pittman Jr. Uh, going on the IR. He's going to be out at least four weeks with the back injury that just popped up, right? We didn't know anything about it. It just kind of popped up a few weeks ago. And then we thought we were going to be without Michael Pittman Jr. We thought that was going to be a massive ordeal. And then he ends up coming out Friday saying he's going to try to go and he ends up playing. And, you know, it's not like it, there's really only one game this year where he had a really big game, right? Which was uh, against the Steelers, which is good. You know, the game that um, I was able to go to is, is one that he was able to have a good game. Six catches, 113, no touchdowns in that game. But um, then you look a couple weeks later, right? You know, the back injury and, and everything that was said, the game after that was a Titans game. He didn't have a big game, but for the second straight season, he had the game-winning touchdown in Tennessee, right? Ends up with three for 35 and a touchdown. And then against the Dolphins, comes out the next week, you know, barely practice. He's probably going to continue to barely practice through the week as he continues to deal with this, especially with Anthony Richardson throwing balls up and he's having to go contested catches and getting hit as he's trying to get the ball. This is not good for his back. You got to have a little self-awareness there, Anthony, but against the Dolphins, um, which was a, an abysmal day for the offense, but he had three catches for 63 yards, right? And then this past game, one for 16, um, whole offense, not really good. When your quarterback's not completing a bunch of passes, it's going to hinder your numbers, which is where Michael Pittman Jr. is really at right now. Um, you know, was was thinking about having a video about, you know, hey, we I think we made a mistake paying Pitt. Um, but, you know, we didn't pay him really as a number one wide receiver. He's making a lot of money, but not number one wide receiver money. Um, but I just think the opportunities aren't there because Anthony's not completing a whole lot of passes uh, from game to game. So, and, and what this conversation is not about the stats, it's about his toughness and the example that that sets. I believe this year, first time captain, if I'm correct, first time captain. And as soon as he was supposed to go on the IR, he's like, nah, I'm Michael Pittman Jr. I'm the toughest dude on this team. They call me the enforcer. He he came out. He said he's going to play. He's played. He's been able to make an impact in games. So with that toughness, like the example that that sets, like you think about how young this team is. So many young guys on this team, so many guys that came in at the same time or after Michael Pittman Jr. And the example that it sets, especially in that wide receiver room, right? You look at um, the entire wide receiver room, like who's older than him? Ashton Doolin? Right, you look at Josh Downs, Alec Pierce, um, A.D. Mitchell. These guys that we keep drafting year after year. Michael Pittman Jr. set quite the example to the wide receivers in that room and to the rest of the team. Like this is my team needs me. I'm going to be on the field for them as long as I can be out there. As long as I feel like I can go, I'm going to be there. And I think that's a good example to set. Right, and and I think. A lot of that comes from DeForest Buckner as well, right? DeForest Buckner usually plays through all the injuries, but start of the year had the back injury, um, and then obviously in the Packers game, early on in that game, ends up hurting his ankle, goes on the IR. I remember, I think it was Stephen Holder. I don't want to get that wrong, but I, I think it might have been Stephen Holder. Somebody, one of the Colts peoples, ended up saying, like, if you think DeForest Buckner is going to be back week seven, then you're you're – kind of crazy like there's unlikely that that's going to happen and then of course so I thought it was really bad I thought the injuries that he sustained were really bad if he's not going to be able to come back uh, after his stint on the IR uh, for four weeks and then here we are he's able to come back week seven JT they were talking about him possibly going on the IR um, and he never went on the IR he comes back Right. And, and all the different, you think about all the injuries that we've had, right? The lineman, Ryan Kelly, dealing with his own injuries this season. Big Q has had multiple back surgeries. Um, and while he, he now has like eight false start penalties on the year, um, Big Q, you know, has his own injury history. He toughs it out. Like we have a bunch of guys on this football team that tough it out week after week after week because the team needs them. 
right? Because they know what their value is to the team and how important they are to the team. And then you have Anthony Richardson. And and that that's why I have such a big issue with it because the, the quarterback quarterbacks win the MVP every year. Why? Because the quarterback is the most important position. I don't like that. I think Christian McCaffrey should have an MVP, at least one MVP. I think Derrick Henry should have at least one MVP, right? Like I, I don't I don't personally like that quarterbacks always win it, but it's the importance of the position. Right. And with the importance of the position, like how do you how do you look at your quarterback and say, like, I can follow this guy when he's one of the least tough guys on the team, maybe the least tough guy on the 53 man roster. Right. And like injuries are one thing. We're sitting, I'm talking about injuries with Pitt and all these other guys. Anthony wasn't even hurt, which is the issue that I take with it, is that he wasn't even hurt. Like, bro, it was third and goal from the 23. We were running the ball no matter what to just to try to give Matt Gay an easier field goal right there and put some points on the board. You're telling me you can't get in there and hand the ball off? You're going to take yourself off? Now, again, it's not important, right? Joe Flacco can get in there and hand the ball off, but it's the message it sends. Leadership. And there are some people that are saying, oh, we're taking the, we're going too far with this. And, and, you know, we're Colts Nation and media. Everybody's freaking out about this. It's not that big of a deal. It is. Take it from anybody, um, from people. Everybody's saying it's not a big deal. I feel like you just never played football. Or maybe you didn't have an important role in football because everybody that I know that did play football, everybody that was in the NFL that is talking about this is talking about how absolutely asinine it is that Anthony pulled himself out. And I'll continue to come back to the fact that he he just turned 22 years old a couple months ago and and he has to mature mentally and physically into his more manly form. But bro. You are an NFL quarterback. Like, what did you expect to happen when you got here is where I'm at. Like, what what did you think was going to happen? Like, and what what is your conditioning like? And that that's why yesterday I was talking about the how they just need to be accountable with Anthony Richardson. Why is he getting winded? If you know you have a running quarterback, he's – I don't care if he's scrambling around all game or not. He's a running quarterback. He should be conditioned – to run the ball 15 times. Like, is that why we don't use his legs very often? Because we know he's not conditioned. Why don't we have somebody in the building that's pushing him day after day? When he gets to that breaking point, he doesn't think he can go. Who in the building is going to say, hey, bro, you got to man up and go. You just got to do it. Endurance is a real thing. You got to build your endurance. Stop being a little girl and go build your endurance, bro. This is the big boy league. Okay, national football. You're not in high school. This isn't college ball. Toughness matters in the NFL. People that play 8, 10, 12, 15 years stay around because they're some of the toughest people in the NFL. And we have some of those guys, a lot of those guys, on this football team. You think about how many tackles Zaire Franklin gets, right? And we, we praise him for it. And people don't think about like it, it, everybody talks about all the, all the running backs and all the hits that they take, you don't think it's the same for linebackers? Zaire Franklin's getting 180 tackles a season. You don't think that 180 car crashes isn't gonna affect Zaire Franklin? He comes out every week and he performs. Now he's not great in pass coverage, which I don't like, but he does come out and he puts his body on the line for the team. Because that's his responsibility as a leader. He is the quarterback of the defense. He's not going to sub himself out because he's tired. He's going to put it all on the line because that's what he's paid to do. Getting paid a lot of money. Anthony's the fourth pick in the draft. What is it, four years, $33 million. Bro is making more money than a lot of people on that football team. A lot of people on that football team. So when you really look at it, Anthony, just ha- he has to be better. And that's why, like, and a lot of this is a continuation of the video from last night or today, if you've seen it. Um, But now we're at a point, like, I just need people to understand that that this isn't okay. There are people that I've seen in the comments um, that, that, like, we're overreacting. I don't think it's an overreaction to say that your leader has to be the, like, the leader, the quarterback. That has to be the toughest guy on the football field. Okay, Jaden Daniels, 
had a rib cartilage injury. We've seen people in the past in the NFL, uh, the quarterbacks in the NFL that miss multiple weeks with rib cartilage injuries. Jaden Daniels is a rookie in the NFL. Still the front half of his rookie season comes out, has a game winning Hail Mary. Okay, plays the entire game against a tough defense. He comes out, puts it all on the line for his team, and comes out with a win. And that's really what it comes down to is putting it all on the line. And listen, of course, I'm not ever I've never been in the NFL, and, and the the stakes of being in the NFL have never been burdened on my shoulders. Okay, I understand that. So it's a little bit, you know, hypocritical to, to sit here and say, oh, he's not being tough enough. But I mean, we see it every Sunday. Like that's you there's such a massive sample size of quarterbacks taking massive hits and then getting back in the game. Then you have Anthony Richardson, who, without being injured, just said, uh, I'm a little tired. I don't know if I can turn around and hand this ball off to my superstar running back real quick. Let me just and I thought. Um, man, who was, there was somebody that was making a really, really solid point. Um, it might've been Rex Ryan, maybe that I had heard. I, I listened to Shannon Sharp. I listened to PFT. I listened, um, to the ESPN guys, Rex Ryan, Dan Orlovsky, all those guys. And, and just, they made a good point on ESPN where, Just think about how the offensive linemen, offensive and defensive linemen, like those are, they're big boys. Right, big old boys, and you you would expect big boys like that probably aren't the most cardio kind of guys, but they don't tap themselves out because they have to protect their quarterback. It is their job. They're going to put it all on the line to keep their quarterback safe. How are the offensive linemen going to respect Anthony Richardson when when he's sitting here like oh, I just I can't do it right now? So. When it all comes down to like leadership matters, there are people saying it's an overreaction. People saying "Ah, it doesn't really matter. I'm I'm not sitting here saying that the performance from Anthony Richardson is completely on him. Right. The the rest of the offense has a hand in that him running around all day and getting tired. Like that's the offensive line. They just didn't do well enough to be able to have Anthony you know be in that situation. Right. He was running around like crazy all day. But bro, like you, you have you're 22 years old. You have to be conditioned enough to be able to to not pull yourself out. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. So, and again, it, so my stance here is that like he didn't get the help he needed in the game, and, and I understand that. But leadership is powerful, man, and, and leadership goes a long way. And it's the little things, right? You you have this happen, and then guys. It's human nature. Everybody's going to have their own opinion about how things go and and what happens during a game. And it's going to be interesting as we continue to go. How does this affect Anthony? How does this affect the team? How does this affect the decisions that the coaches have to make on what we're going to do? at that position going forward. And we're going to talk, I'm going to have another video here in just a little while about the possibilities of what we do at the quarterback position going forward um, in the immediate future and in the long-term future. Uh, So make sure you subscribe with notifications on so you continue to get notified anytime we have any more content dropping on this channel. And of course, I appreciate you stopping by for another video. And as always, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and go Colts.